Welcome to Patch Dispatch. I am Corey Luna. And I'm Richard Hogben. And this is our third installment on August 13th and 2023. And we've got a couple of modules to look at. We've got a couple of albums to look at and a show review for you tonight. Uh, Rich, uh, you mentioned a couple of uh, unique things that uh, piqued your interest. What were you looking at in gear? Um, yeah, uh, well, I think one of the things that, uh, caught my attention recently was the, uh, the new, uh, make noise, uh, seven U case, um, which I know has been a pretty popular case, <clears throat> the original one. Um, and they've recently, uh, released the, uh, like an updated version. It's kind of, um, standout, uh, changes are they redesigned the the power board um which i thought was really cool because they separated into sort of, sort of like four different zones um which helps keep your um you know if you have any like noisy modules it separates them so you, it, a lot less chance you're going to get like humming or buzzing or you know uh things in uh, interacting with each other in unintended ways um they also redesigned the CV bus. There's new mo utility modules and um, there's more connectors. They added more nuts uh, so that you can add more modules. Um, just like an overall like uh, big update. So do yeah, you, I was looking you, at you have the original, right? Oh, yeah, I've got the original uh, right here behind me actually. And I just took it out to perform it earlier uh, in the week on Friday. And but the, so the original compared to the new one, the original has uh, 18 inputs. So now with the four zones, it has up to 32 inputs. That's an additional 14 inputs to the original 18. Right. So that's something that I think all of us have been really looking for. Like I've got a 84 HP case back here that has 20 inputs by itself. Right. And there's no way I can ever put unless I'm using two HP modules, there's, there's right. no way I'm going to be able to use all those inputs. Right. So it's a great update for the, for the bus board to have an additional 14 inputs. Uh, I think it's a great idea that they spaced it out for noise cancellation of, of uh, the electronics. And there was, that was like one of my favorite features really. And then I think they did a little update on the one U molt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, <clears throat> the utility modules they updated, they also, cleaned up the outs so that I think the out it, the line out now is also improved so it should be quieter or cleaner sounding right so um, there were some changes I think to the actual case itself too like um, better ceiling uh, just improved kind of the overall case design but it still looks looks similar um, there's a video in the page. Do you want me to play it real quick? Yeah, sure. Let's see what happens. A decade has passed. The synthesis of the world have developed an insatiable hunger for power, it's, and we are going to give it to them. It's a very creative we'll video. We'll do this thing. <laughs> we must do it. We need more power than the bus board can provide. A new design is necessary. Let's shut it down. All of it? All of it? Okay, it's like seven minutes long, so. <laughs> We've watched it. It's like a well, full was... feature film, basically, of the case. Uh, it looks really cool. It's definitely make noise style, so I, rec I recommend checking it out yeah. when you can. Yeah, it looks like on the uh, on the one you they went with a uh, a stereo output instead of the uh, you know a, a dedicated left and right output. Uh huh. Right. 
uh, compared to the original, which only has uh, one output for for left and right. So you have to get a a, a split connect uh, mm-hmm. output connector. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, TRS. Yeah, that's cool. Which, which yeah, which I bought and cool. All right, and what was the next piece on your list for gear? Uh, we've got the uh, from the something from uh, Zlob Modular. Right from uh, Zlob Modular, which he's uh, he, we actually had him on peak number twenty three in twenty twenty one in July, two years ago. Um, uh, say k he's in uh, illinois and he's just recently put out a new module called uh, i'm not exactly how to pronounce this correctly but i'm going to go for it it'll be uh, today i'm going to say uh full diplier mm-hmm. could be mm-hmm. I, uh it's a type of uh folding uh odd even module yeah i think it could be Fold applier, fold applier, like a multiplier. Oh, maybe it's fold applier. I could make that makes sense. <laughs> maybe, maybe he'll do that. He'll yeah. he'll probably email me back later and odd even me. harmonics generator with feedback. That's it. Um, it comes in a kit because he always says you know build kits, which is about thirty dollars, and then you can buy it uh, pre built, hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, big big markup but uh you know if you like building modules which some of us do mm-hmm. i'm sure it'd be a fun one he, what's kind of cool about his about the swapmodular.com website is that he rates all of his modules that he sells diy kits with a difficulty level up to mm-hmm. up to five stars mm-hmm. and this one has three and a half stars now that's like a, I, that's kind of a, a nice feature that i think is a something quite nice that he does for his uh, for people that buy his modules and, and to try to build them. It's only four HP. So it looks like, uh, you know, it's not, not, not too much to put together. Yeah. I was trying to see if there was a photo of the back, but I don't see it. Yeah. I don't think he uploaded one. Do you want me to play one of the demos? There's two demos on this page. Yeah. Let's go ahead and play one of those. Okay. Maybe the shorter one. Okay. Let's see. This one's a minute long. Yeah, it sounds it sounds great. Yeah, that's a cool piece. Looks like uh, the middle section, the harmonics middle section, is uh, section of the uh, the surge wave multiplier. But definitely, it's got some inspiration in his own design. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this sound this is a fun one. Yeah, they Again, I, I those those, those modules have a really good design. They're very distinct, like you can tell. Usually, always. Yeah, Zob modular always has great uh, a particular grit and character mm-hmm. uh, to everything that he he builds. All of his chips have a distinct sound that you know is a Zob modular piece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, what's next on your list? Cool. Um, <clears throat> I have a uh, a YouTube channel um, called uh, Nobody in the Computer. Nobody in the Computer. Nobody and the Computer. So it's, oh, um, yeah, the videos he puts together are really creative uh, and funny. And he has sort of like, I think a full 
like a Discord community that he interacts with. Um, but this video he published, looks like it was on the 9th, is called How to Lo-Fi with AI. So uh, apologize if you are totally against everything AI, <laughs> uh, if you're listening. Um, but I thought this was a really creative video. Um, you know, uh, he's using a bunch of different tools. Um, and um, he's used, basically he uses like uh, either something similar to a chat GPT. Um, he'll prompt it and give it instructions to generate uh, chord pro progressions, melodies. And then he has a like custom script where he, where he um, inputs that text from the, the bot that generates uh, MIDI from that, the, those instructions. And then, um, and then he pulls the MIDI into Ableton or something and then, um, you know, makes it sound better, basically. Um, uh, because, you know, the MIDI comes out like very like, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, the, you know, you need to add like timing and, and, and kind of break up the chords a little bit and, and that. So, he definitely adds like a personal touch to it that makes it sound, you know, uh, more human. Um, so I was going to play a section of that video where he's um, uh, generating the MIDI and then creating the uh, the lo-fi kind of uh, sample. Let me, uh, let me get that going. If you're a seasoned visitor of this channel, you know we love using Google Colab as our coding playground. But for the newbies among us, here's the lowdown. We share a link to an online coding arena where we take the textual masterpiece crafted by our large language model and with a bit of nerdy wizardry, transform it into a MIDI. Simple and fun, right? So we take the Llama 2 melody information, copy paste it into the relevant part of the code and run the cell that transforms it into a MIDI. We do the same with the chord text. Now boom, two MIDI files are downloaded onto our computer. We whisk them over to the DAW and let's have a listen. Well, it's not quite a masterpiece yet, but worry not. Let's roll up our sleeves and do some tinkering in the DAW. Our melody seems a bit tone deaf, but nothing we can't fix. Give the chords a touch. And adding in that rain effect that our pal Llama 2 hinted at. And why not go the extra mile and create some chill out rain videos using a sprinkle of AI magic? Let's take a look and give it a listen. Oh, I'm feeling so zen I could practically levitate. Yeah, so um, I liked the result he got out of that after he edited it. So he put it to, at the end, he, or halfway through the video, he had the, the uh, <clears throat> edited MIDI notes going. He added a, some rain sound to the background, atmospheric, and then also generated some video of like, you know, rain and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I really like the channel. They've got another one where he goes over like making album covers um, using a whole bunch of different tools. So um, I like that what they're doing is they're not just like spitting stuff out and like, here's the, this is the end result, but just kind of using it, you know, um, to kind of start ideas and then, and then really going in and, and, you know, finishing it off. Like uh, it, you know, take, it, it does take skill to, to still do that. So. No, you're definitely right. Um, I'm I'm barely getting into AI, just using uh, Photoshop beta prompts for generated images, and and that's been uh, fun and definitely a challenge trying to figure out how to properly write a prompt so I get the a generated image that is similar to my imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the prompting is a big deal. <clears throat> that like. To there's a lot of stuff there you learn that you pick up um, that really like 
takes it to the next level. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely check out the uh, making the album cover one because he does some pretty cool techniques as far as like, you know, feeding it source images to give it sort of a base inspiration and then, um, you know, prompting it to kind of uh, go in a little different direction um, and then putting it all together into like a whole finished piece. So, yeah, I thought that was really cool. It, definitely a great channel. So. Yeah, this is yeah. really this is really neat. Oh, that's a good one. Cool. So, um, so you had some albums to cover. So we've got two albums uh, that are just recently released. Uh, the first one is out by Megaran called Buddy's Magic Toy Box. Now, this is probably the first time I'm really talking about uh, someone who's kind of came out of the, the nerd core scene and has really been able to go uh, – a become a mainstream rapper in his own right is Mega Ram, and he's been he's been around since maybe 2006 is when he really started getting he started started producing music, but I don't think he really started using the name Mega Ram until closer to 2009. And I actually I had reached out to um, not specifically him, but I had reached out to uh, his. Uh, so when he's going to be touring with uh, MC Front a lot, because they're playing a show on September fifth, and I wanted to go to the show to take some press photos and and cover a do an article on the, on the show, and also eventually maybe get one of them or two of them on on a North Beats podcast. And the manager got back to me and said, "Hey, I'm also managing uh, Mega Ran. Here's the new album." So actually, he actually gave me uh, some downloads uh, about maybe a week before the album actually dropped on Bandcamp and all other major platforms, and it's really unique and of how the whole concept of the album is. He wrote music for his new son. Uh, he just he and his wife just became foster parents, mm. uh, Mega Rand specifically, and and his whole album was inspired by his uh love for being a father and and taking on that role and all the fun things they can do and creating a rap album that uh, that his kid can listen to and enjoy hmm. and i thought it was you know and he's always done that uh genre of he never swears or uses like vulgarity in any form or or even really any sexual content in his raps it's something that I think he's always put forward into his raps is that, you know, he can be wholesome and his album uh, is very much a wholesome album. So it's a, I thought it was really fa a fun, ta fun uh, album where he goes, he even like plays a little bit where he goes from doing uh, hip hop raps and I'll see there's even a ska song in there. And there's a couple other featured <laughs> artists in there as well. Cause he's always working with the production team. So it's a really fun album. And you can find Megaran's new album, Buddy's Magic Toy Box, at megaranmusic.com forward slash album forward slash Buddy's Magic Toy Box. That's a really fun one. And the other album that actually just got released, I think today, I have to double check that, but uh, you see that today or yesterday, our friend Malarkey put out a... a, a maybe a, I would say an EP as it's uh, three tracks, but it's a pretty cool album where he has done three ambient industrial tracks and there looks like he had them all recorded live in different uh, performances. He did, I think maybe this year and there's minimal, minimal uh, amount of percussion in it. And it's more about the atmosphere. Mm. And I had to write down this quote on from his Bandcamp page on his new album haunting his quote is haunting is not passive listening nor is it comforting <laughs> yeah if you listen to it you'll understand that quote pretty well do you want me to play a preview of it there's looks like um oh yeah play one there's a expanse is at the top
it's uh it's massive sounding huh. yeah it's crazy he definitely was trying to fill the room mm -hmm. with that sound yeah definitely yeah and if you've heard malarkey before this is classic malarkey creating textual atmosphere that can fill an auditorium and what's really cool is he always puts a lot of effort into uh, the production of, of the physical album. So he's selling this on CDs. There's five variant covers, all done on, uh, on metallic photo stock paper. And it all looks really cool. He's uh, He does all his own art. It's I'm not sure if it's AI generated or uh, 3D generated but it's phenomenal. It all works together. And it literally looks like, like buildings or bo like boxes exploding. Mm -hmm. It's really, you know, in each one is really cool. There's, yeah, I like, I like the variant art uh, covers for his albums that he does here. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a neat album. And so this one just came out, right? Like today or recently? Let's see. I just saw him post about it on, on Instagram. And sometimes, let's see here, yesterday. Uh, okay. According to the Bandcamp page, it says it was released August 12th of 2023. Nice. So it came out on uh, Saturday. Yeah, and then uh, we have... Uh, We've got one of yours. Yeah. <laughs> tell us so about, actually, uh, tell us about fall radio. So, uh, Friday, I actually had did a little, uh, live performance to using modular at the fault radio nonprofit headquarters and fault radio is a kind of a rogue radio station where they're actually doing, you know, uh, live video DJ sets and the host DJs at their home base here in San Francisco. And they also go to different events and will record and showcase what's going on over there and put that under their brand. The, I actually uh, ran into them. Actually, they were at our three year anniversary show at mission since I believe. Actually, no way. That's wrong. No, uh, we ran into, I ran into Fault Radio in 2021, I think, for the one-year anniversary of Mission Synths. We went down there and mm. recorded all the artists who performed for that anniversary show. So I got to be on that for the first time. And then, uh, Rich, you and I were working on an on a article a couple months ago on you had an idea of putting a list of event spaces that cater to electronic music mm -hmm. you know, between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Yeah. So we started coming up with different places and fault radio was one of the places that I remember uh, admiring what they were doing. And they happened to have a headquarters here in San Francisco, somewhere between Chinatown and the financial district, just up the street from empire park, which is a very nice little park. It has a little history. So I went down there a little over a month ago, maybe at the end of June, and spoke to the manager at Fault Radio Mo, and he was really nice, told me the really great history about the two people who originally originally started Fault Radio. I believe they were uh, from Israel, and they came out here and started this, and they, I think they started during COVID, and I think it was a way for them to uh, get people to get together and build a community of DJs primarily. And so they started doing that during lockdown. And from there, they've grown into doing shows here and there. We'll go to different event spaces and put on different showcases. And they also do weekly showcases at their headquarters of DJ sets. So when Mo explained this all to me, I, I asked him about uh, modular Eurorack and people who are specifically playing electronic music. And he said that they're open to having people come on and, and doing those performances. Mm -hmm. So I asked if I could come down and he said, yes. So uh, he booked me for August 11th, this, this past Friday. So this past month and a half, I've been rehearsing, recording my practice sets for fault radio. 
and I use the share system you have you see behind me and also a little lunch box which is up there that's the uh, 2 HP lunch box which is 42 HP as much as that's 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 how small that case is so between those two I had multitudes of different modules going on and because I had to unpatch part of my my patch just to get to the show mm -hmm. I had to recreate that patch using <laughs> photographs I took which I think we've all done that at some point and I, I don't think I got it entirely where I wanted it to be I don't think I got every angle every patch in the correct space so there's a couple of hiccups in my set of just how the progression of the melody was as yeah. there it was basically more of a noise set mm. but I definitely had a fun time because I was focusing in on some samples that I've been working on this past year and for me that was a way to kind of showcase some of the different samples I've been creating uh recording my brothers saying different phrases mm -hmm. so I've been playing around with those and manipulating them between uh, tip top audio one and morphogen and that's been pretty fun but overall uh fault radio great little space it's like the size of a tiny coffee shop i think is like maybe mm -hmm. what that space used to be mm -hmm. so they kind of kept that that kind of format of like a nice little counter in the back where they have all the djs set up they had me set up on the back wall and there was a couple other djs there as well let's see if i wrote them down they are i want to mention the other people performing there because they were you know pretty nice people uh, the, before me, the first two DJs, it was a duo, and they were kind of like switching off, doing turntables together. Mm -hmm. It was Tastemaker and Kimosabi. They did a you know, nice groovy set. So and the, after them, I got to go on at 6 p.m. And then after me was, let's see, where is that guy? I'm just going to have to spell his name out. Uh, H L D R vscn i'm not sure how you could pronounce that <laughs> hldr vrcn uh vscn hldr vscn holder vision that could be i don't it know <laughs> so holder uh, vision yeah, yeah. He, he did a DJ set after my performance, and he described my set as crazy. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that was the best. That was that was the only review I got. Uh, also, uh, and, and he played a pretty cool set. I liked his DJ set. It was pretty uh, very energetic. But the other, oh, uh, then uh, at Fault Radio. Uh, the original fellow I met, Mo, was not there, but instead uh, this other guy, Anthony. And he and I got to chat before my set went on, and he was telling me about the electronic scene in China mm. and telling me there's like, certain locations like Shanghai and maybe Beijing, I think was the other place he mentioned, have uh, strong electronic music scenes. And I think uh, not, I think maybe Beijing, he said, had a bit more of... Uh, an experimental aspect to their scene and Shanghai is more mainstream, but it was cool to hear. And so hopefully maybe someday I can make it out to China and check those scenes out and maybe we can do some video shoots out there. Oh, that'd be, that'd be super uh, fun. Yeah. Do you want me to play a uh, sample of your set? Sure.
Yeah, cool. Nice job. I really like how you can see the the rack in your glasses. <laughs> At the right angle, it looks like a big, just all the blinky lights. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. What uh, what shirt are you wearing? I'm wearing a, it might be a bootleg shirt, but it's a, it says Captain Spaulding for President. Okay. And that was actually, uh, it's a t-shirt from a movie of a Rob Zombie film called uh, The Devil's Rejects. Mm. And and uh, Sid, the actor is Sid Haig played the character known as Captain Spaulding in it, whose face is on that t-shirt. And he has this, you know, and, and, and you know, this, this, that's, this is a horror film. So this movie is about, you know, basically serial killers and how they're a family and how they get along. And it was a really great character film, even though it's you know, how horrific and horrible they are as people. Like it was actually like a really fun movie that resonates a lot with me for some reason. I, I still really enjoy rewatching that film. But, but he had the character Kevin Spaulding has a, has a commercial, and he's a clown on TV and has and has a little commercial that he did, and he says, you know, "Don't forget to pick up your Captain Spaulding." For president t-shirt i thought that was hilarious <laughs> so my partner found someone who had made that shirt uh, and, and bought it for me that's cool all right well everyone thanks for watching patch dispatch i am Corey luna and i'm richard hogman good night